In the gloomy world of King of Dust, where shadows writhe and nightmares come alive, the protagonist Darius Starbon emerges from the depths. In this lit RPG tale, inspired by the tapestry of a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, Darius assumes the role of the disgraced King of Starkovia, bearing the weight of a haunting past on his weary shoulders. Born into the nomadic Mortrean tribe, Darius was raised as a prince immersed in the realm of knowledge and wisdom. With his pallid complexion and a cascade of dark hair as if touched by obsidian, he possessed an ethereal allure that both captivated and unnerved. His sea-green eyes mirrored the deep-seated longing and unspoken secrets that laid within his still youthful and untainted soul. When his father, driven by ambition and a thirst for power, ignited the fires of war against Ebia, Darius and his formidable brother Theo joined the merciless campaign. As general, Darius strategized with the precision of a master tactician, guiding their forces to victory and seizing control of Ebia, which they renamed Starkovia. Within the walls of Castle Luminlight, an architectural marvel named after his beloved mother, Darius sought solace amidst the echoes of battles won and lives lost. However, as the sun set on his father's rule, a sinister shadow cast its menacing grip over Theo. Dark and disturbing signs of instability emerged, whispering of a descent into madness that would shatter the fragile peace. In an unexpected twist of fate, a tragic accident thrust Darius into a role he never envisioned, accidental fratricide, staining his hands and his heart with the weight of remorse. In the depths of his grief and turmoil, haunted by the ghosts of war, Darius found an unexpected ray of light in the form of Clara, a resilient Ebian woman who had settled in the conquered land. Running a modest business amidst the newly formed capital, Clara's presence offered a balm to Darius's torment. Their shared love for literature and intellectual pursuits formed the foundation of a profound friendship. Yet, as their fragile bond blossomed, Theo's covetous eyes fixated upon Clara's ethereal beauty. Blinded by his own madness and intoxicated by power, he declared that their father's dying wish was for him to wed a native Ebion, seeking to solidify his reign. Darius, torn between love and loyalty, found himself entangled in a deadly rivalry with his own flesh and blood. In a chilling night, stained by grief and rage, the brothers confronted one another in a tempestuous clash. Fear mingled with desperation, and a tragic accident unfolded, forever altering the course of their lives. With a trembling hand, Darius unwittingly became the harbinger of his brother's demise, forever staining his own soul with guilt and regret. Now burdened with the weight of a tarnished crown, Darius assumed the mantle of King of Starkovia, a role he never sought nor desired. Plagued by misjudgment and false perceptions, he faced a relentless struggle to redeem himself in the eyes of Clara and his fractured kingdom. As rain poured relentlessly upon the spires of Castle Luminlight, Darius, consumed by remorse, desperately sought to reconcile with Clara. Their encounter within the castle's labyrinthine halls ignited confrontation fueled by conflicting emotions and shattered trust. Rain soaked and disoriented, their struggle led them to the perilous heights of the castle's roof, where lightning cracked across the stormy sky. But in a cruel twist of fate, as Darius and Clara grappled with their tangled feelings, Clara stumbled upon the treacherous stones of the balcony. Helplessly, Darius watched as she plummeted into the unforgiving abyss below. The echoes of loss reverberated through the chambers of his shattered heart as he realized the weight of the tragedies that had befallen him in such a short span. Haunted by grief and driven by an insatiable longing to undo his mistakes, Darius was drawn into the clutches of three witches. They whispered secrets of soul reincarnation, promising him a chance to retrieve Clara from the depths of the afterlife. Blinded by desperation, Darius agreed to their ominous pact unaware of the price he would pay. With a drop of his own blood, mingling with the ancient heart-shaped gemstone amulet bestowed upon him by his mother, Darius sealed the fate of Starkovia. A twisted bubble of stagnant time encapsulated the kingdom, trapping souls within its borders and thwarting the natural cycle of reincarnation. 
the land became cloaked in an impenetrable fog, denying escape to all who ventured beyond its boundaries, save for the Mortraeans, a restless people yearning for freedom. Awakened by a ravenous hunger, Daria soon discovered the true nature of the witch's curse that had befallen him. His cravings led him down the shadowed corridors of Castle Luminlight, drawn to the tantalizing aroma of the palace kitchens. Darius hoped to find solace in the leftover delicacies of the night before, but alas, the cupboards were bare, leaving him to wander the deserted kitchen in search of sustenance. It was then that he stumbled upon Bertrand, the cook's innocent son, preparing the morning's bread. Something within Darius stirred, a primal urge overpowering his senses, the rhythmic pounding of the baker's pulse echoed in his ears, a maddening symphony that compelled him forward. With a swift and unexpected fury, Darius succumbed to an inner beast, committing an act of unthinkable violence. In a flurry of crimson, Bertrand's life was abruptly extinguished. Darius, drenched in the aftermath of his unspeakable act, stood in stunned silence. The once kind-hearted prince now confronted a monstrous reality. He had become a creature of the night, a vampire. The taste of blood lingered upon his lips, a grotesque reminder that the darkness had taken hold. This was the unforeseen cost of the witch's favor. The weight of his sins threatened to consume him, gnawing at his shattered conscience. As he gazed upon the gruesome scene, remnants of Bertrand's essence scattered around him, the undeniable truth emerged. A twisted transformation had birthed a creature that existed solely on the essence of life. Darius, fearing for the safety of everyone around him, slowly began to separate himself from any and all people in the castle. He became a ghost, nothing more than a shadow on the wall, and people assumed that the king had gone mad. Eventually, servant after servant died, leaving only Darius to look over the halls of Castle Luminlight. The people of Starkovia grew restless. They did not know if their king even still existed and all of them were painfully aware, as time went on, that their king had become something horrendous. Half of the people of Starkovia did not even view Darius as their true king, but instead some invader, and now an invader that was out for their blood. Darius, in his loneliness and in his quest to find Clara, slowly turned others into vampires, hoping to fill a hole in his heart that continued to grow deeper and deeper every passing day. These vampires betrayed him over time, creating vampires of their own, and soon Starkovia became a cesspit infested with darkness and creatures of the night. With the Starkovians unable to flee the hell that they now occupied and unable to send a message to the outside world, they grew desperate. As the days turned into years, Darius, burdened by guilt and regret, ruled over a realm suspended in perpetual twilight. The once vibrant Starkovia became a macabre stage for his existence. Each passing day, he questioned the consequences of his ill-fated choice, trapped within the ethereal prison of his own making. Hundreds of years ticked by, and Darius grew impatient, until finally he decided that he must find someone who could locate Clara's soul for him. The witches had abandoned him, seemingly only interested in some other dark purpose, and Darius sent his Mortraeans outside in order to receive some sorry souls, lure them inside Starkovia in order to convince them to help him. And this is where my book King of Dust begins. I wanted to weave a tale of loss, love, and the allure of second chances. What started as a fun Dungeons & Dragons campaign very quickly became an opportunity to allow people who are grieving and who have lost loved ones to find something and connect to it. As Darius finds this team of people who are there to help him find Clara and to keep him in check, things get out of control. He, almost against his will, joins up with demon spawn Inquisitor Urian, one of his ex-boyfriends and wealthy aristocrat Yura and his new friend Astrid, as they tromp across the countryside, attempting to fix Darius' 400-year-old mess and hopefully eventually finding a cure for his vampirism. Vampirism in King of Dust is not pretty. It's not something that is sweet and soft. It is something that is hard and cruel and highlights what happens to people when they turn on their own kind. 
King of Dust is a place where imagination takes hold, spinning a tale of monstrous metamorphosis and the inner demons that dwell within. It is a descent into a world teetering on the precipice of despair, where darkness seeps through every crack and redemption hangs by a thread. Will Darius succumb entirely to his vampiric nature, or will he find a sliver of light amidst the encroaching shadows? If you're interested in reading King of Dust and you like vampire fiction, this book is actually entirely free on Wattpad. It was also a Wadi's 2022 shortlisted finalist, and I am so proud of this book. If you're interested in giving it a read, this new adult lit RPG paranormal fantasy can be consumed in bite-sized pieces by following the link in the description below. I'll be back later with a part two showcasing the final version of this piece and talking a little bit more about Darius and the band of misfits that he scrounges together to try and fix his 400-year-old problem. If you're interested in storytelling, reading, and art, and want to support an indie author and artist, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon so you're notified when I post more storytelling videos like this, and give the video a like, let other people know that you like it. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next time.